Okay. So we came to the conclusion that this scenario matches our equation here. And we put an 8 in. And when we graphed it, we did the same for the negative 1. We treated it as negative 1 times negative 1 would be a positive 1. 1 minus 1 would be 0. And we continued. And then our graph ended up looking like a U. Absolute value graphs always are a V. And when you have an exponent of 2, you're always going to get a U. It's a special feature that happens because of what's happening with the rules that are within them. So once we saw this, if you know that that's going to be a U, you should be pretty confident that you puzzled through this correctly. We had some conversation that this negative outside of the parentheses when we squared it means that we would square this first following order of operations. 3 times 3 would be 9. nine and then we'd multiply it by the negative 1. So that's why it matches this scenario. Okay, and we would have had 9 minus 1 would have still been 8, but it doesn't always work that way. So I just want you guys to think about what's happening when there's no parentheses here. We're doing negative 3 times negative 3. Okay? All right, so I'm going to flip over, and we're just going to pick. I want you guys to look at 5 through 10. Pick 1. 21. 10. 10. 7. 21. 7. 10. 10. 10. Let's do 10. Do you notice with these, there is no domain? Over here, when I look at our objective, graphing functions with a limited domain, that's when the book is telling you, I want you to graph this with this set of numbers. And those were the numbers that we put into our table when we used. What's happening with problems? 5 through 10, you have to graph the function, but it's not giving you any domain. You have to decide what the input is. So let's write down number 10, which is y is equal to negative x squared plus 5. That's our rule, right? That's our rule. I would recommend whenever you do this, you should try to have five inputs. Our rule here is negative x squared plus 5. We are going to end up putting, I would put in things like, I always like to start off with negatives. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If you're going to end up with a u or a v, it'll show up with those numbers. Go ahead and start filling in your rule table, or your your table underneath the rule section. I'm really glad we chose this example after our last conversation because yeah, we have to put the parentheses in here, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for the zero, it kind of doesn't matter. The first thing we have to do is square our x value and then multiply it by a negative. So negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. Times negative 1 makes it a negative 4. Plus 5, 1. This is going to become positive 1 times another negative. So we have negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 0 plus 5 is 5. 1 times negative 1 is 1, and then plus 5 again is 4. And then we end up with 4 times negative plus 5, we get 1. It has an exponent in it, so what shape are we looking for to see if we've done this right? A U. A U. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can hopefully see both. Okay. 
Again, label this y is equal to negative x squared plus 5. Negative 2, positive 1. You can see that it's not an absolute value because it's got that little kind of a curve you have to do to get from here to here on the graph. Yeah. Oops, sorry, thank you. And it just kind of swoops down like this, and this one swoops down here. There's a couple things you need to know. If it's a negative, it's going to go down. Where is the negative telling us that this is a negative? Right there. 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 And this squared tells us we're looking for a U shape. And this tells us that the line crosses the Y axis at positive five. Is it there? Yes. Yes. We can look at that equation to use it to check ourselves. Okay? You guys just have to get some graphing practice in because graphing is such a part of what we're doing. Make sure you're getting all of your equations into y equals mx plus b, or it might be that fancy f of x, but same thing. You want to get those into the right place. I have given you eight graphs on each paper, so you should have 12 left, right? A whole fresh sheet with two graphs and four on the back of this. On page 260, I want you guys to do numbers 13 through 24. You should have exactly the right number of graphs for that. You're going to need a piece of binder paper to do the tables on and then the graphs. Unless you write really tiny, you could potentially do the work on this paper in this space if you write small enough. Okay? Page 260, numbers 13 through 24. 